Welcome. This is the one year Bible reading for October 21st, and it is a banner day over here in Bible reading land because I've gotten myself a microphone on the request of some of the YouTube followers. So you'll have to let me know if I sound any louder than I did before. Starting this morning in Jeremiah chapter 37. Zedekiah, son of Josiah, succeeded Jehoiachin, son of Jehoiakim, as the king of Judah. He was appointed by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. But neither King Zedekiah nor his officials nor the people who were left in the land listened to what the Lord said through Jeremiah. Nevertheless, King Zedekiah sent Jehuqal, son of Shelemiah and Zephaniah the priest, son of Maseiah, to ask Jeremiah, Please pray to the Lord our God for us. Jeremiah had not yet been imprisoned, so he could come and go as he pleased. At this time, the army of Pharaoh Hophra of Egypt appeared at the southern border of Judah. When the Babylonian army heard about it, they withdrew from their siege of Jerusalem. Then the Lord's message to Jeremiah, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, tell the king of Judah who, have, who sent you to ask me what is going to happen, that Pharaoh's army is about to return to Egypt, though he came here to help you. Then the Babylonians will come back and capture this city and burn it to the ground. The Lord says, do not fool yourselves that the Babylonians are gone for good. They aren't. Even if you were to destroy the entire Babylonian army, leaving only a handful of wounded survivors, they would still stagger from their tents and burn this city to the ground. When the Babylonian army left Jerusalem because of Pharaoh's approaching army, uh, Jeremiah started to leave the city on his way to the land of Benjamin to see the property he had bought. But as he was walking through the Benjamin gate, a sentry arrested him and said, you are defending the sentry making the arrest was Arijah, son of Shelemiah and grandson of Hananiah. That's not true, Jeremiah protested. I had no intention of doing any such thing. But Arijah would not listen, and he took Jeremiah before the officials. They were furious with Jeremiah and had him flogged and imprisoned in the house of Jonathan, the secretary. Jonathan's house had been converted into a prison. Jeremiah was put into a dungeon cell where he remained for many days. Later, King Zedekiah secretly requested Jeremiah come to the palace, where the king asked him, Do you have any messages from the Lord? Yes, I do, said Jeremiah. You will be defeated by the king of Babylon. Then Jeremiah asked the king, What crime have I committed? What have I done against you, your officials, or the people, that I should be imprisoned like this? Where are your prophets now who told you the king of Babylon would not attack you? Listen, my lord, the king, I beg you, don't send me back to the dungeon in the house of Jonathan, the secretary, for I will die there. So King Zedekiah commanded that Jeremiah not be returned to the dungeon. Instead, he was imprisoned in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace. The king also commanded that Jeremiah be given a loaf of fresh bread every day, as long as there was any left in the city. So Jeremiah was put in the palace prison. Now Shephatiah, son of Matan, Gedaliah, son of Pashur, Jehuqal, son of Shelemiah, and Pashur, son of Malchijah, heard what Jeremiah had been telling the people. He was saying, this is what the Lord says. Everyone who stays in Jerusalem will die from war, famine, or disease. But those who surrender to the Babylonians will live. The Lord also says the city of Jerusalem will surely be handed over to the army of the king of Babylon, who will capture it. So these officials went to the king and said, Sir, this man must die. That kind of talk will undermine the morale of the few fighting men we have left, as well as that of all the people, too. This man is a traitor. So King Zedekiah agreed. All right, he said, do as you like. I will do nothing to stop you. So the officials took Jeremiah from his cell and lowered him by ropes into an empty cistern in the prison yard. It belonged to Malchijah, a member of the royal family. There was no water in the cistern, but there was a thick layer of mud at the bottom, and Jeremiah sank down into it. But Ebed-Melech, the Ethiopian, an important palace official, heard that Jeremiah was in the cistern. 
At that time, the king was holding court at the Benjamin Gate, so Ebed-Melech rushed from the palace to speak with him. My lord, the king, he said, these men have done a very evil thing in putting Jeremiah the prophet into the cistern. He will soon die of hunger, for almost all the bread in the city is gone. So the king told Ebed-Melech, thirty of my men, and pull Jeremiah out of the cistern before he dies. So Ebed-Melech took the men with him and went to a room in the palace beneath the treasury where he found some old rags and discarded clothing. He carried these to the cistern and lowered them to Jeremiah on a rope. Ebed-Melech called down to Jeremiah, Put these rags under your armpits to protect you from the ropes. When Jeremiah was ready, they pulled him out. So Jeremiah was returned to the courtyard of the guard, the palace prison, where he remained. Now this is remarkable faith on the part of Ebed-Melech the Ethiopian, who was a servant of King Zedekiah, that really he feared God and desired justice more than he feared the king. One day, King Zedekiah sent for Jeremiah to meet him at the third entrance of the Lord's temple. I want to ask you something, the king said, and don't try to hide the truth. Jeremiah said, if I tell you the truth, you will kill me. And if I give you advice, you won't listen to me anyway. So King Zedekiah secretly promised him, as surely as the Lord our creator lives, I will not kill you or hand you over to the men who want you dead. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel says, if you surrender to Babylon, you and your family will live and the city will not be burned. But if you refuse to surrender, you will not escape. This city will be handed over to the Babylonians and they will burn it to the ground. But I am afraid to surrender, the king said, for the Babylonians will hand me over to the Judeans who have defected to them. And who knows what they will do to me? Jeremiah replied, You won't be handed over to them if you choose to obey the Lord. Your life will be spared and all will go well for you. But if you refuse to surrender, this is what the Lord has revealed to me. All the women left in your palace will be brought out and given to the officers of the Babylonian army. Then the women will taunt you, saying, What fine friends you have. They have betrayed and misled you. When your feet sank in the mud, they left you to your fate. All your wives and children will be led out to the Babylonians, and you will not escape. You will be seized by the king of Babylon, and this city will be burned. Then Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, Don't tell anyone you told me this, or you will die. My officials may hear that I spoke to you. Then they may say to you, Tell us what you and the king were talking about. If you don't tell us, we will kill you. If this happens, just tell them you begged me not to send you back to Jonathan's dungeon, for fear you would die there. Sure enough, it was not long before the king's officials came to Jeremiah and asked him why the king had called for him. But Jeremiah followed the king's instructions, and they left without finding out the truth. No one had overheard the conversation between Jeremiah and the king. And Jeremiah remained a prisoner in the courtyard of the guard until Jerusalem was captured. 1 Timothy chapter 6 Christians who are slaves should give their masters full respect so that the name of God and his teaching will not be shamed. If your master is a Christian, that is no excuse for being disrespectful. You should work all the harder because you are helping another believer by your efforts. Teach these truths, Timothy, and encourage everyone to obey them. Some false teachers may deny these things, but these are the sound, wholesome, Lord Jesus Christ, and they are the foundation of a godly life. Anyone who teaches anything different is both conceited and ignorant. Such a person has an unhealthy desire to quibble over the meaning of words. This stirs up arguments ending in jealousy, fighting, slander, and evil suspicions. These people always cause trouble. Their minds are corrupt, and they don't tell the truth. To them, religion is just a way to get rich. Yet true religion with contentment is great wealth. After all, we didn't bring anything with us when we came into the world, and we certainly cannot carry anything with us when we die. So if we have enough food and clothing, let us be content. But people who long to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many foolish and harmful desires that plunge them into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. And some people craving money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many sorrows. 
But you, Timothy, belong to God. So run from all these evil things and follow what is good and right. Pursue a godly life along with faith, love, perseverance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight for what we believe. Hold tightly to the eternal life that God has given you, which you have confessed so well before many witnesses. And I command you before God who gives life to all, and before Christ Jesus who gave a good testimony before Pontius Pilate, that you obey his commands with all purity. Then no one can find fault with you from now until our Lord Jesus Christ returns. For at the right time, Christ will be revealed from heaven by the blessed and only Almighty God, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He alone can never die, and he lives in light so brilliant that no human can approach him. No one has ever seen him, nor ever will. To him be honor and power forever. Amen. Tell those who are rich in this world not to be proud and not to trust in their money, which will soon be gone. But their trust should be in the living God who richly gives us all we need for our enjoyment. Tell them to use their money to do good. They should be rich in good works and should give generously to those in need, always being ready to share with others whatever God has given them. By doing this, they will be storing up their treasure good foundation for the future so that they may take hold of real life. Timothy, guard what God has entrusted to you. Avoid godless, foolish discussions with those who oppose you with their so-called knowledge. Some people have wandered from the faith by following such foolishness. May God's grace be with you all. Psalm 89, starting in verse 38. But now you, the Lord, have rejected him, David. Why are you so angry with the one you chose as king? You have renounced your covenant with him, for you have thrown his crown. You have broken down the walls protecting him and laid in ruins every fort defending him. Everyone who comes along has robbed him while his neighbors mock. You have strengthened his enemies against him and made them all rejoice. You have made his sword useless and have refused to help him in battle. You have ended his splendor and overturned his throne. You have made him old before his time and publicly disgraced him. O Lord, how long will this go on? Will you hide yourself forever? How long will your anger burn like fire? Remember how short my life is, how empty and futile this human existence. No one can live forever. All will die. No one can escape the power of the grave. Lord, where is your unfailing love? You promised it to David with a faithful pledge. Consider, Lord, how your servants are disgraced. I carry in my heart the insults of so many people. Your enemies have mocked me, O Lord. They mock the one you anointed as king. Blessed be the Lord forever. Amen and amen. Up, uh, 25, 28. A person without self-control is as defenseless as a city with broken down walls. And to end today, I have a blessing for you. And it is from Philippians 4.23. And this is from the message. Receive and experience the amazing grace of the master, Jesus Christ, deep, deep within yourselves. May you lift your head, open your arms, and receive all God so lovingly wants to pour into you today. May you shake off the cloak of discouragement and leave it on the ground where it belongs. God is doing a new thing in your midst. He's already at work on your behalf. Do not fix your mind on the things that frustrate you or break your heart. Fix your eyes on the author and finisher of your faith who will complete what he started. Walk with faith and hope and love today. <laughs> love you all. Have a beautiful day.